What's going on, everybody? Welcome, welcome back. If you've been here before, I'm Neon Mushroom, and today I've got a pile of garbage, I think. Um, this is going to be... You can just see it. It's, it's four-color reanimator ring. This is a 5-0 list from the uh, deck drops for a league by Hyper. And my roommate and I, Guy, for those of you who uh, know, if you know, you know, um, we were talking about, man, what if, I really want to play Troll of... Uh, however you pronounce it. Troll of... Let's try. Let's try together. Troll of Kazad Dumb. Dumb Troll. I wanted to play this really badly in a persist shell and we were going back and forth about can we put this in creativity uh, i brought the topic up let's put this in creativity and i explained all the cool reasons to do it you can cycle the troll to go get zeotaurus proving ground and cycle it with renin six it's a persist target that always works but then guy was like hey man creativity doesn't uh you don't want a creativity into a troll uh when you need an archon to come into play in order to win the game and he was right and then i found this list so this is I think this is a base Esper list. It just happens to have Fable of the Mirror Breaker because it's just very good. And apparently uh, Hyper thought it was good enough to include a whole nother color of mana. But this kind of, for anyone who hasn't seen this type of list with Ephemerate Solitude and Grief, it's got some scammy elements going on, but it's gonna try to like disrupt the opponent very quickly and then just take over the game with a copy of Persist. Um, so because of that, we've got Faithful Mendings, we've got Fables, we've got this weird one. Uh, what is this? The Brothers War Draft All-Star, the Archaeology. It comes into play, mill three, you may put a non-creature, non-land card from among them into your hand. If you don't, it's a 1-4, it's a which I guess is actually a reasonable blocker. So I don't know anything about this deck. I don't know uh, how to play it, but we're going to jump into a league. All right, we found an opponent and we won the die roll. So let's check out what openers in this deck look like. We've got a troll, a couple fable of the mirror breakers, and four lands. I do not understand this deck at all um, but i will look at this and say we can't deal with a turn one two or three anything so we're gonna mulligan and we're not comboing very effectively this hand i think does what the deck wants to do i can go like savai triome into like some blue land and then i'll have all of my spells castable um the archaeologist can it get land any non-land so so no um so maybe i put a faithful mending on the bottom and try it let's give it a shot bye faithful mending so if i try them think i'm creativity go all right we have a plane this is it hammer time this is is this an esper sentinel it's a cigar aid, so this is definitely hammer time um making me really happy we have a solitude in our hand it's a little sketch uh we don't really want, I guess we don't mind pitching Faithful Mending to the Solitude. It doesn't super matter. I hope there's a basic island in this deck. Because what I want to do is get basic island and cast the Archaeologist. The absolute nut is for Archon and any other card to go to the bin. And then I take Persist off the Archaeologist. That would be... I don't know how Hammer beats that. It's funny, Hammer did not perform very well at the Pro Tour. We saw a ton of Scam. A ton of uh, Tron, randomly. Which is, it makes sense. The ring is like... It fits like a glove into Tron. And then we saw like an above average amount of Rhinos, which did do very well. If you're a fan of old school, like Magic Geniuses, Kai Buddha did top eight, and that was very exciting for me. But um, I, I didn't see any of the blue-white ring deck in the top eight, although a copy or two did make it into the top 32, and I did like the list a lot. So I'll be playing that again in the future. But Hammer did not do very well at all. But now I'm looking at the online deck drops, and I'm seeing a ton of Hammer in the online deck drops. Now that's because I think the Hammer... If you look at the top eight of the Pro Tour, Hammer can like shred at least Tron and I think it's scam matchups pretty bad, but I think it has the tools to beat Rhinos and I think it just beats the crap out of uh, Amulet Titan, which is another deck that was able to top eight that event as well. Really, really cool for me uh, looking at the Pro Tour coverage, just like the Pro Tour was gone for the longest time and it was like they did this thing with the Mythic Championship and it was all online and on Arena and to see like the first modern Pro Tour in ages and like some familiar faces top eighting this uh this particular pro tour was awesome we do have an island in the deck that's cool i probably should have checked that before hitting submit of my deck list but oh well here is my archaeologist aka a thing that can block an esper sentinel for a turn what's happening right now you probably can't see it unless you look up in this corner but my opponents already used four minutes of their game time this is the this is like the main reason that i'm recording this instead of streaming it because I, I run into this all the time on Magic Online. And I get that you can like fill the space with talking, yada, yada, yada. But I just want it to be good. Okay, so I flipped Archon, Grief, Solitude. So I've got a big Archaeologist. No persists, but I got a 1-4. It's not the worst. Maybe resolve a Fable next turn. Maybe, maybe I'll need to pitch cast Solitude on like whatever threat they try to kill us with. But yeah, our opponent's taken exactly one game action. And they are at uh, just about 20 minutes left on the clock. It happens to me. It's got to be above average for me. I can't imagine everyone deals with this multiple times per league. I hope they don't. Urza Saga, cool, you got it. That thing has the ability to tap for mana now. You're just going to pass the turn? 
What kind of opener did you keep, Mr. Hammer Player? Okay, that's a persist. I'm gonna cast it. Archon, do you have like a reprieve? They have a surge of salvation, that is fine. I still just have an Archon. So you can you can do with that information, which you will, buddy. Okay, so worked out perfect. We top deck persist. We can probably just attack with this archeologist, I guess. Uh, yeah, you don't have pro blue, it's fine. Attack, go to 19 and go. And then we probably fetch for, I don't think we're, I'll have to, when I fetch, I'll have to look. I don't know if this is a binding deck. If it is, we probably grab a triome that makes green so we can like have one mana leyland bindings. That could be pretty cool. Our opponent is now all nice and set up with their Urza Saga, ready to make some constructs. And the Inkmoth Nexus is able to threaten the kill. So we have a Sparrow's Headquarters. Let's grab that. That'll give us all of our colors. Um, so I have to be mindful. I probably can't cast this Faithful Mending. I probably need to hold Solitude up. But I'm definitely going to jam Fable after I go to combat. Mm, my turn. Pawuda Delta. Um, no, need, no reason to even play it. I'm going to combat. Here I come, dude. I'm just gonna attack you with one Archon. Trigger, discard, lose three. I'll gain three and draw. That's another Faithful Mending, so that's pretty sweet. And then take five, go to 11. Yes, sweet, awesome. Polluted Delta, um, red, whatever, whatever, who cares? Here's Fable. Trigger the Fable, make a Goblin token. Goblin Shaman to be exact, and pass. And our opponent is going to uh, make a Construct, which is totally cool. This archaeologist will be on blocking duty. And looks like they're gonna float the mana as opposed to making another one. They've got the Sigarda's aid, so they're probably gonna try to go for a uh, Maybe an Ink Moth kill, but if they want to do it with the Urza Saga, like if they want to, you know, the hammer takes away flying from a creature. So if they want to like activate Ink Moth Nexus and then slip on a hammer, it's not lethal. One Colossus Hammer, are we putting on the constructs? That's cool. That's that's a vibe. What else? Do we have a Shadow Spear? That would be pretty unlucky. Steel Shaper's Gift? Sure. There's another hammer. This doesn't kill me, my dude. All right, there's the Shadow Spear. They're, looks like they're using their colorless mana to cast it. Um, sure. How does Surge work? Did they get Hexproof and prevent all damage? Got it. So 14. So what I'm gonna do here is, we know they have the Shadow Spear in their hand. I think they got another hammer. I, I saw them get another hammer with their Steel Shaper's Gift. That's gonna make that Construct a 25-25 attacker. Um, but I can put six toughness in front of it, meaning that it will, 19 damage will get pushed through and I'll go to two. Um, obviously I can pitch cast the Solitude and that's all good and well but I'm gonna assign blocks first and wait till the last minute. That way, if they have another Surge of Salvation, I don't just get absolutely shredded. Now, it looks like they're gonna let damage happen. And if damage happens, it's really interesting here because there's a big push to Solitude the Construct, but that's gonna leave me wide open next turn because they do have a hammer and then they can activate their Ink Moth Nexus, attack me, equip hammer, 10 poison is just lethal. So I think I'm just gonna take the damage kill the construct with the Archon of Cruelty and hope to find some way to back this Solitude up. All right, so let's fetch, grab, mm, we got white, white. Don't need another red, we got blue, blue. Let's just grab a Hollowed Fountain tapped and go to our turn. Another Solitude, that's pretty great. I'm gonna declare no changes to uh, my hand because I can just double pitch cast Solitude. All right, we're coming in four or five. Please sacrifice something cool. Oh, they're gonna activate the Inkmoth Nexus and sacrifice that. Fine with me. So they have to discard, they'll drop to 22. I'll draw a troll of a uh, dumb troll, because I'm not gonna try to pronounce that. And then they'll take five, dropping down to 17. And they're down, tapped down to one mana right now. So I think this is the moment where I actually just go for their construct. So I will. Solitude, Exile, Faithful Mending. Your uh, construct. Another hammer, I don't care if you gain a billion life. That's. Once you're hellbent, this Archon's gonna keep you oppressed. So you gain as much life as you want, buddy. Go to 40, whatever. 42, cool. All right, what do you do now? Nothing. I guess we could make a land drop. Womp Cycling, grab me a Watery Grave, put the Watery Grave in a play tapped, go. Hammer Time isn't known for having a lot of answers to permanence, so once this Fable flips, it gets really messy. Forge anew, that's fine. We're gonna get back Caldra Complete, pretty easy Solitude. Actually, I don't even know if I, well, no, I probably will Solitude because the Forge Anew is gonna do some stinky stuff. Okay, so let's take a read. Wait, go away, there we go. When Forge Anew enters the battlefield, return an equipment card, yada, yada. As long as it's your turn, you may activate equip abilities anytime you can cast an instant. You may pay zero rather than pay the equip cost of your first equip ability you activate during each of your turns. So they probably think they have me to lethal, but I'm just gonna let them go to combat. Send in, sure, I have no blocks. Oh, you wanna do that? Cool. I would like to solitude your germ. All right, goodbye germ. Go to 40 whatever. Opponent says easy in the chat. Another one. All right, they're at 46, which isn't cool. But this Archon, oh, another Archon. Well, not much I can do with that right now, but I'm gonna get busy. Two draw steps to figure it out like immediately. 
a draw polluted delta, not the greatest, not the worst creatures to sacrifice. So they'll just take the full eight and drop to 38. Here's a polluted delta. Um, I do have notably in my graveyard, I believe, no, I think I pitch cast both of my faithful mendings. So scratch that. There's no cool spells to cast from the grave. So I'll just pass the turn. And if they can't dig themselves out of it, out of this position they're in right now, I feel pretty good. Stoneforge Mystic, okay. So if they really want to, they can beat our face in with Caldra Complete, but that's about it. They can go Stoneforge Colossus Hammer. Why would they not equip the Caldra Complete? Yeah, there you go. So we've got six power, and then if they flash in the hammer, that'll be good for what? 18, six, six, 16 damage. Um, do I care? I don't think so. Am I missing anything? I don't think so. No, yeah, they already equipped the Caldra Complete for free. So they can only do this once, right? Yeah, for the first ability, you activate each of your turns. Okay, that's fine. I don't care if I go to two. Colossus Hammer comes into play. Sigarda's Aid does its thing. Sucks itself on to, <laughs> sucks itself on to Stoneforge Mystic. I go to two. We good here? All right, on tap. All right, so there's no reason to activate the reflections yet because I can just do it whenever they put a threat into play. So we'll just go to combat, declare attacks. Also, I just slipped over this. Leyline Binding is in the deck and it's a very good draw here. All right, they have to sacrifice their creature. No cards in hand, they lose three. We go to damage, they go to 29. I draw a card, I gain three, so I'm at five now. Um, here's a plane, so we're like really close to being able to hard cast Archon. Yeah, I don't know how we lose from here. Deck seems sweet. Of course, I say that as I'm just like attacking with an Archon every turn starting on turn three. I don't know why they're doing nothing here. That seems very odd. Maybe they're just going to try to crack both Cracklands and like sneak in on that way. But I am going to make another Archon. Think if they don't sort this out, they're dead, right? Let's see here. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. This is exactly lethal. Let me count this again. Um, 6 from the first Archon plus 5 from the smaller Archon equals 11. Um, plus another six would be 17. And then plus nine from all three Archon triggers, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. That is just lethal. I'm going for it. There's no way I'm not going for lethal. Okay, another one, please. Oh no, it's overkill for lethal because I get the uh, ETB as well. All right, good luck opponent. Combat, boom, three Archon triggers. They can pop their crack lands. I don't know what out they could possibly have. All right, cool. I draw Grief, that's neat. I draw Marsh Flats, that's cool. I draw Fable, cool. Now crack both your Cracklands and die. I guess they can find Surge of Salvation. Oh, no, we just win. Well, that was that was easy. We definitely dealt um, a grand total of like 80 damage to our opponent that game, which I think was pretty cool. Um, what's good against this deck? None of these blue cards. Chalice, I think, is pretty good. EE, I think, is pretty good. Verdict is probably pretty good. Teferi's probably pretty medium, but if I can, we'll see. Ephemerate is a little bit awkward with Chalice because I'm going to be chalicing on one. Hmm. This certainly doesn't seem like the matchup for the one ring for me, so I'm going to take these out. I still think I want my Ephemerates. I think it's like fine to just like play around my own cards because I'm not going to be able to play Chalice on one until turn two at the earliest. And if I have an Ephemerate, I can just plan around it. I think that's got to be fine. Fable's pretty medium. And I don't think I, do I actually want both Supreme Verdicts? Probably this deck doesn't have like Dress Down or anything. They can't really answer the Fable. I think I'm gonna trim one of those. No, I can't think of any, I think I need to trim these Fables. I think it's the clunkiest card and I am on the draw now. So let's try this. All right, this is a hand with both Chalice and EE. We've got an Archon and a Persist. We've got a lot of ways to pitch this Archon, not in our hand currently. I think we need to keep this hand. We're just going to keep it. We're going to hope they don't have like the super fast go under these spells hand. And even if they do, we just pray we draw a white card to pitch cast to solitude. And what's really nice is if we, okay, there's there's a cigar to aid. What's really nice is if we do wind up having to solitude, we can persist it after. And I found an ephemerate. Wow. Let's go polluted delta. I don't mind paying some life here. What's the best thing? My hand is very black and white. So let's get a black and white land. Cause I think I want to put this EE down on one right now. Yeah, yeah. All right, there's that. Here's this. Here's my engineered explosives and go. No, no, I put it down on zero. Oh, that was stupid. I forgot to actually pay mana for the engineered explosives. <laughs> Misclick. If we lose, this is like almost certainly why we lose. Pure Steel Paladin, sure. All right, they're just passing, that's fine. Um, Marsh Flats, I guess. Now I'm going to Chalice down because I've ruined my entire game plan by misclicking this EE into play on zero. Um, I need double white, so let's just grab Hollowed Fountain and play Chalice on one. Okay, there we go. So that exists. And then if we need to, we can just Solitude the Pure Steel Paladin. Now Ephemerate's on strictly pitch to Solitude duty. Yes, I take two. Sanctifier. Okay, I think I know what I want to do now. This is a little bit awkward. I guess it's not that awkward at all. I'll just let them go to end step. Now I'm going to cast by exiling Ephemerate, 
my solitude. And then I'm going to exile, I guess, pure steel paladin. They can sneak in a hammer, but I've got a chalice, so no, they can't. So that's gone. Now I can just, what, persist my solitude and like try to win with that? Is that how this works? How do I lose? I don't know. I'm not thinking about it too hard. Black, white, persist, solitude. Bam, solitude. Get out of here. Go. I'm on the alpha plan of attack for two, um, 11 times. Oh no, ornithopter. I have something to blow up my EE on. Easy bet. Another persist. Let's get busy with solitude. Beat, please don't flash in some insane, like, sword. That would be the worst. Okay, they take it. I gain some life. Archaeologist? I can get a land drop? No, I can't get a land drop. So, there was nothing. It just gets bigger. Oh, but I got another persist and another solitude in the bin. Okay, we're just passing. I'm trying to flash in Colossus Hammer, but we still have a chalice on one. I don't know why they would do that. Unless they're going to forge a new. Don't forge Mystic? Sure. What do we want to scoop up? Is it going to be another hammer that they're going to try to cheat in? They're going to try to cheat in the hammer with Stoneforge Mystic. The good news for me is that I can just uh, persist this solitude, which I think I'm going to do right now. Ooh, persist solitude number two. Exile Stoneforge Mystic so you can't cheat the Colossus Hammer into play. Cool. Combat guy. Two all gain two. Okay. If we had only put our EE in play on one like we were supposed to, we would have a, uh, we'd be having a better time right now. But now if I blow up my EE, it also blows up my chalice. So I have to really think about that. I guess I don't hate having an EE on zero when they have an Urza Saga in play. All right. Leyline Binding. Not castable yet. Let's just get busy. These. Take four. Cool. I'm back at 20. Life total was never the problem. All right. I'm probably just never going to tap mana until it's time to blow up this EE. But note, when it is time to blow up this EE, I'm also going to take out my Chalice, which is a little bit sad. All right, my turn. Land. All right, we'll play it, and we will go to combat. Yes. Let's see. If they make a Saga token, it'll be a 2-2. Then they can activate Ink Moth Nexus to make it a 3-3. Maybe this turn I pump the brakes a little bit and don't attack. Yeah, I think I don't attack. Go. All of their white. So I could actually Leyline Binding the Sigarda's Aid, which I don't know if that's strictly correct or incorrect, but I'm going to do it. That out of here. That way they can't, like around uh, my chalice by grabbing a hammer with their saga and then use the cigar to to cheat it onto a creature. Another construct, sure. And they're going to cheat something into play. The spring leaf drum, okay. Get in with a four power dude, that's fine. I don't care about that. Four. Sanctifier in Vec, sure. All right, my turn. Let's see here. Savai Trium, not the worst. We can cast this verdict at some point. I wonder if we're like not even supposed to crack the explosives and we're just going to use verdict instead. Kind of like that. Yeah, we'll just play a really long game. Go. All right, they're going to combat. I think we're double blocking something. Yeah, we'll just put a solitude and a solitude in front of one of them and then the archaeologist in front of the other. It kind of like telegraphs what we're about to do, but I think that's fine. Okay, you've activated Inkbot Nexus. Oh, you're going to keep them alive, sure. Oh no, not another one. That's that's actually very bad for us. Another Saga. Stoneforge. Are they going to get Kaldra complete, maybe? I still need to Verdict, that's for sure. Another Hammer. Hmm, there's a Troll. I guess I could... No, putting that in my graveyard right now doesn't make any sense because they'll just get exiled to the Sanctifier, right? Yeah, right. Verdict. Please don't Reprieve this. All right, they didn't have Reprieve. Go. Somehow I've gotten around having to crack my Engineered Explosives to kill my Chalice. Lucky, lucky. I think land plus forge a new kills me though. Oh, but they don't have it. Lucky, lucky, lucky. Another troll. Let's go ahead and get a land drop. Watery Grave is fine. Put it into play tapped. Um, And I guess we can just pass. And then we do have the second verdict so we can deal with the constructs, albeit at a hefty price of my life total. What are they going to get here? Maybe Shadow Spear so they can actually start equipping things. Gingy Brute. They're going to go fast. All right, I'll take the five. Go to 15. My turn. Solitude, not a bad pickup, but I'm still going to Verdict here. There we go. Verdict. All right. Now, I could... I think I'm just going to make my land drop as well. I think that's pretty important because we, we're getting to the point where hard casting this Archon's like a thing. Go. They're going to get busy with Ink Moth Nexus. That's fine. Shh. I'm poisoned. They've got seven cards in hand, which tells me this Chalice is doing exactly what I signed up for it to do. Um, here, nothing to do. I'm not going to play a Chalice on zero. I could technically put it into play on two, but I think that might hurt me more. So I'm just going to pass. If they get busy with Nexus again, I'm just going to flash in Solitude. I'll wait till they've declared the attack, though. That way they don't have as much mana with their Springleaf Drum. I guess this is a land anyway, but you get what I'm saying. All right, all right. This. Solitude. Go away. They can't surge because I got to chow someone. Okay, can you beat this? I got to go to discard. It's just a one drop. Cool. Now I can hard cast Grief. Cool. I'm going to do that right now. Great, great, great. Things are going well. Show me what you've got. Oh, look. A hand of... One drops and a Caldra complete. Um, I guess if I had to hit any of these, it would be, hmm, I guess I'm mildly worried about them playing Forge anew. They just conceded. Okay, cool. Great. I was overthinking it. We just win the game no matter what. Uh, 
this deck seems cracked. That was just what we have a sample size of exactly one game, but I thought it was fun. We'll be back with game two right about now. And we won the die roll, so that's pretty cool. All right, let's see here. We've got five lands, troll, and a binding that we can probably put into play for one mana on turn two. I don't think that's what this deck's trying to do though, so we're gonna mulligan. Mm. Hmm. We have a turn one scam. I mean, we can just go turn one, uh, fetch shot, go grab, let's say hollow. No, no, no. I think, yeah, hollowed fountain would be fine. God, the shrine would also work. It doesn't matter because we can swamp cycle the troll. So we'll get hollowed fountain. And then we can pitch awkwardly Archon of Cruelty to the grief and then ephemerate the grief. What if we did that? Our opponent's mulliganing? I think I'll try it. I'm a scam deck now. So I gotta put a card on the bottom. Let's do the archeologist or is it faithful mending? I feel like it actually might be faithful mending. Let's pitch that. All right, our opponent went to six, but we're gonna try to put them at four. Flooded strand, fetch, hollowed fountain, shock. All right, how do we need to do this? I need to go cast by exiling a black card. It'll be the Archon, grief you. Okay, now we need to put our, I always mess this up. I need to put my triggers on the stack in a way where everything will be fine. So if I put the evoke trigger on the stack first, which is what I'm going to do, I will put the evoke trigger on the stack. There we go. Now we get to use grief's ability. Okay, it looks like we're playing against uh, rhinos maybe, Lorium revealed force of negation, fire ice. Let's take out their force of negation and then tap for white and a Ephemerator Grief. All right, show me your hand again. All right, this time I think we'll grab their Fire Ice because it doesn't super matter. And now we just have a Grief and we get to do it again next turn because of the Ephemerate. Great, okay, that went that went wonderfully. Our opponent has three lands, no, effectively four lands in their hand. So let's see what we can do. A basic Island and do a pass the turn. Sure, great, amazing. All right, in my upkeep, I get to rebound my Ephemerate targeting my Grief. Do you have anything for this? All right, Grief you. Oh, a Brazen Borrower, no. All right, we draw a Savai Trium, that's pretty great. So we'll just play it and then nothing else to do because we you know we flickered our grief so it has summoning sickness now just pass the turn they cycle lorian revealed i'm sure or are they gonna hold it and try to just cast it at some point that wouldn't be that crazy land pass sure i'm not gonna cycle this troll yet maybe i should have actually yeah because i can't get a land off the archaeologist i should have cycled the troll that was actually really silly what i did there um, we will go to combat and we'll attack with the grief and then we're just gonna play the archie wait i can have my cake and eat it right yeah what am i talking about i can go Red Swamp Cycle, grab, we've got double white, we've got one blue, that's all we'll ever need. Maybe just a basic swamp. I'm gonna grab basic swamp. Yeah, no, we're fine. Everything worked out fine. And we get to play the Archaeologist, and now we can cast Fable next turn. Ar Ar Archaeologist triggers. Give me a Persist, please. Aw. We keep getting nothing off the Archaeologist. That's very sad. Go. Hopefully our opponent just never draws a Cascader and everything's gonna be great. Wooded Foothills. So far they don't have it. Turn, draw, Godless Shrine, cool. We'll just get busy for, you know, if they have the footfalls, then they have it. I'm just gonna, I need to get the job done. So I'm coming in for four. They don't have it. So they'll drop to 12 and then I can just play Fable. Maybe they have the counter magic. Who cares though? I gotta play my cards. Fable, it resolves. I'm actually not gonna play my God the Shrine. I'm just gonna pass. That way I can like have a better pitch redraw to the Fable of the Mirror Breaker. They fetch, drop to 11, catch your Triumph, and your turn. All right, no whammies, no whammies. Don't shardless me. Cool. They're just going to pass to us. So we have two lands. We don't want either of them. So we'll just pitch them both. Polluted Delta Archon, sure. So we're going to go to combat and do the same thing we've been doing. Beep, beep. And I make a treasure. Getting closer to this Archon. No outburst? No outburst. They're at five. Amazing. Here's a Delta and go, I guess. Now they could Fury here. What would they take out? Goblin token plus grief. Yep, there's the Fury. Boo. That's awful. We hate to see that. Okay, there, go, there goes my buddies. That's unfortunate. All right, let's just draw Persist. Easy. Fair enough. Deck. We'll fetch. Um, huh. Yeah, we can't get Sparrows off of that. We'll just grab a tapped Shrine, I guess. And our turn. Oh, nope. Just a troll. No luck with the, uh, no luck with the hot top deck of Persist. I think we're supposed to land cycle this troll and like get as close as possible because we could always start making copies of this archaeologist with reflections which seems unhinged but i think it's actually pretty good so we'll just cycle the troll wait is there another swamp in my deck there is watery grave we're good play the watery grave and just pass pass to our opponent oh gemstone that's not a great draw keep bricking do not outburst it's not worth it stop mm. okay we're start it's starting to get sketchy now a really good top deck here would be the One Ring. All right, I'm not gonna block with this Archaeologist. I don't think it's time for that yet. Solitude, okay. I think I kind of need to do it right now in order to dodge Mystical Dispute is a potential out for our opponent. So let's just cast our Solitude. This, it's gotta be Fury, unfortunately. And then keep passing the turn and hope we eventually draw Persist. Because I think if we do, the game does just end. Our opponent's draw has been very medium. Oh no, 
Don't play something good. Hardcast Lorien revealed or another Fury? Hardcast Lorien revealed, sure. Another gemstone. Legend rule applies. Cool, cool, cool. What do you got? Fire Solitude? Looks like exactly that. Fire the Solitude. I think it is time to block this Bone Crusher Giant. All right, block. You got it. All right, no land. I guess if we draw land, land, we can cast this Archon of Cruelty. We drew Persist. All right, opponent, don't have it. Do not have Pitch Cast Force of Negation because I am going to go grab this Archon of Cruelty. They don't have it. Great. They sack the Bone Crusher. They discard a card. I draw Leyline Binding. That could not have gone better if I wanted it to. That was actually incredible. You love to see it. I'm cracked at this game. Please don't Petty Theft my Archon. Gone. Okay, Gone's just as bad. It's back in my hand. Looks like they're not doing anything else, though. And I've got a Binding, so there's still some game to be played. All right, if we draw one more land, we can start hard casting Archons. So I think from this point on, every draw is just like very, very good. Except for Triumph. Spara's headquarters would be miserable. Let's not ever draw that. They draw, don't do anything, pass to us. They lagged a little bit, so I'm wondering if they have outbursts. All right, we're just gonna go for it. There's no reason not to. If they've got counter magic, so be it. We gotta do what we gotta do. Shock, Arcan, Black. Whatever, 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 black. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Can you stop this Archon? Oh, a mystical dispute, okay. Hopefully they don't have footfalls because that's gonna be really creepy and bad for us. They missed once. We've got another top deck to cast a second Archon, which would be pretty great. Cast Lorian Revealed again. They needed another blue to do that. All right, they hard cast it again. Rip, land, so they've only got three in hand. And they suspend a crashing footfalls, okay. All right, deck, draw not far as headquarters, please. I'll take almost anything else. Faithful Mending, great. Um, let's go white, blue, faithful. Pitch marsh flats and binding, I guess. Do we just need to do this again? I think so. Doot, dupe, mending. Okay, so do we... This troll doesn't have the cycling ability anymore. It doesn't do the thing we want it to. So I think we just pitch troll in solitude because I don't think there's any swamps left in our deck. Yeah, we just do it like that. All right, you're up, opponent. I tried to find my land drop and I couldn't. That's a big bummer. We really wanted to resolve Archon that turn so they couldn't just like dispute us. With any luck, they just have to like resolve a Fury or something here. Still just two in hand. They pass to us. We draw Ephemerate. That is not great. We'll just have to pass. Is it Violent Time? I know you just drew three with Lorien Revealed. Just Ice. Okay, that's fine. Rhinos get closer. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, they suspend another copy of Crashing Footfalls. I think we just kind of have to jam Archon if we draw the land, unfortunately. A Persist? Okay, let's do that. Uh, where's my Archon? Boom. Persist Archon of Cruelty, please. Please, please, please. Pretty, pretty, please. Don't force of negation this, please. Stay force of negation it. All right, well, we've got a couple more turns to figure it out. Hopefully our opponent doesn't hard cast another Lorien Revealed. All right, now there's four Rhinos on their way. Not very cool. What do we got here? Shardless? Okay, here we go. Our opponent's game plan is popping off. We're probably going to binding one of these Rhinos. Get Archon into play. If we can draw the land. We've tried so hard to draw land for a few turns now. Mm, I guess I'll binding now. Oh, I don't have everything. I'm missing green. Okay. Binding. Take out Rhino. Cut that clock down a little bit. My turn. All right, opponent. Oh, I hope I have a fetchable. I think... I don't know if I have a fetchable for this. Let's find out. We don't have a target? Oh my god. Do we have any more mana producing lands in our deck? Oh, dude. We don't even have any more mana producing lands in our deck. Ah, that's a... That's a bit of a yikes. Hmm. Hmm. What are we supposed to do? I guess I'll F6. That's awful. I think that would have won us the game. So let's see, let's do a count here. We've got nothing there. What do we have in the graveyard? Plains, Godless Shrine, Sparrow's Headquarters. So there are enough lands easily to hardcast Archon. We just got the Archaeologist and the uh, Faithful Mendings we should have been more mindful with. I'm gonna give it one more top deck, but I don't know exact, like I guess Solitude would be fine. If we could like draw Solitude or another Persist and use this Ephemerate to do some serious work. All right, my turn. Persist, okay, there's a start. Maybe I just need to persist this Archon, though. Yeah? Yeah, Archon. Can you stop me again? Do you have another force? Nope, there's an Archon. Cool. So they're gonna have to pitch a card, and if they try to interact with the Archon, I can ephemerate it. And we draw Solitude? Wow, what a turnaround. That was actually pretty sweet. All right, go, opponent. Ooh, and they're gonna try to interact with it? Okay, this is great. No. Actually, your Petty Fet Theft fizzles, and you, uh, you, yeah, you die because of the Archon trigger. Wow, I thought for sure we were dead because we couldn't hard cast it, but we asked to draw Persist and drew Persist and everything was fine. Okay, this man, this is going to be a little bit weird because like this, I guess, no, we're putting EE -E on zero. Our EE -E and Chalice are going on zero. So like our sideboard just kind of, we weirdly want everything. Like we want Chalices, we want EEs, we want Verdicts, we want Teferis. There's no way it's right to bring in all these cards, even though they all look really good. Let's see what we have to take out. Bindings are pretty bad. I think Fable is pretty medium. I can't imagine we're ever taking out our Archons or our Trolls. Solitude seems a little lukewarm. I'm fine cutting like two of those. There's no way we're cutting Persist. I don't think we're cutting 
I think I think that's kind of all we get to cut. Um, is there stuff in here we don't really want that bad? Maybe Spell Pierce is like leaving us with what we need two more cuts. What if we just did this? Is that good? Or is that just entirely too much hate for the matchup? And there's no way that's gonna fly. Or do we just cut our ephemerates? Hmm. <laughs> is grief weak in this matchup? Man, how would how would how would the architect hyper fiberboard this matchup? I think I'm gonna get a little bit weird. I think I'm gonna trim a one ring as well. Bring in another spell pierce. I'm gonna try shaving all the solitudes. That makes me honestly super uneasy. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna get a little wonky and I'll cut one troll and leave a solitude in my deck. And I'm gonna try this. Maybe even cut an ephemerate because of the uh, brazen borrowers and bring in like another spell pierce. Let's try this configuration. I have no clue if this means anything. All right, this opener sucks. If we had any land, it would be nuts. Any non-watery grave land. So we could like grief scam them, but we gotta pitch it. All right, this is the hand with the archeologist, persist and troll. So we have turn two, reanimate the troll and the troll doesn't die to fury. I am, I feel I should keep this. Um, meaning we should ship the Sparrow's headquarters because I think we need to do everything on curve. And our opponent could blood moon us. So we're probably fine just like going to grab, let's say island and then swamp cycling for swamp. So yeah, we'll do it that way. Oh, another land suite. All right, marsh flats, go. Tap land, okay, they're passing to us. Let's go ahead and fetch. We'll grab a let me see, we have a swamp, a plains. Is there an island in this deck? I think there is. I think we put it into play already at some point. I'm just looking to visually identify the island so I can make sure to fetch it, fetch for it with my uh, flooded strand. Yep, I see the island. Okay, so we'll get a plains, tap the plains, and we'll swamp cycle here, grab a swamp, and go to our turn. Play the swamp. I love that force of negation. Then I'm just going to persist this troll. I'm going to... I'm gonna put a clock into play and see if that does anything. Maybe they have to pitch cast force this or something. And they do. Okay, you got it, buddy. You are up. They're gonna miss their third land drop as well, which is like great news for us. All right, we can play this flooded strand. They're down on land, so we need to press our advantage. I'm just gonna fetch, grab a basic island, go boop, play the archeologist. I'll leave white up for ephemerate. Archeologist triggers, and then, oh, we got a chalice. I'll grab a chalice. I'm gonna play chalice on zero. Do you have another force of negation? Another force of negation. Wow, they pitch shardless to it. Okay, that's fine. Hopefully they don't just like like top deck land and rhinos us. They had to pitch Brazen Bar when Shardless Agent, so we'll see. Oh, they're just gonna suspend a footfall, it's great. All right, we're really insulated against Blood Moon, which I'm very happy about. We're probably gonna cycle that Savai Triumph, so we'll just get not busy, because that's a zero three. I'm so used to it being a one four, because I was with the trigger. So we'll just pass, and we can hard cast Force of Negation if we need to. As a matter of fact, I'm not gonna leave anything to chance. Let's just, let's do it now. Grab, do we want double white here? I think so. We've got double black and Savai Triumph. So we'll grab Hollow Fountain, shock it into play, and then just pass. Closer, and they're still missing land drop. Yay. Meaning that I can safely just cycle this Savai Triumph. Strand, sure. Faithful Mending. All right, I'll play Strand and just pass. Are they gonna ice something here? Looks like it. I guess I'll just cast Faithful Mending. Okay, Ephemerate and another Faithful. I guess we'll discard a Faithful? No, wait. No, I can always fetch to hard cast the Force of Negation. So yeah, we'll discard Faithful plus Ephemerate. I think. Nah, maybe I don't need the land. I'm just gonna pitch Faithful plus Marsh Flats, actually. All right, you got it, Ice Works. Rhinos get closer. Gemstone, stinky. They're just gonna pass to us. We're not gonna fetch on their end step because that would be the moment where they go for it. Grief? Hmm, Grief's cool. I wonder if I pitch cast this Grief. That seems like it could be good. Yeah, I think if I pitch cast this Grief, planning to ephemerate, it lets us hold up Force of Negation for if they try to go to Rhinos. So let's do that. Let's go cast by exiling Archon. All right, they're gonna Violent Outburst, which we'll let that happen. We're gonna point our Force of Negation at the Footfalls. Blue, black, blue, Force Rhinos. Do you have another Force of Negation? They don't. Okay, Grief. Put the Evoke Trigger on the stack first. Show me your hand. Oh, wow. Okay, I'll take Fury, and then I will Ephemerate Grief. Another one? I will take, I guess, Bone Crusher Giant. And then they'll have to dead this Grief if they don't want it to happen again. I think we're about to get rhinoed though, so there's that. Nope, we got one more turn after this one. All right, go, 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 go. All right, I guess I'll fetch here. They're passing to me. We'll grab a tapped Spara's headquarters. No, I guess I kind of want double black. Hmm. Yeah, we'll grab, no, uh, that's kind of hard. Yeah, we'll grab watery grave tapped actually. Go to our turn, rebound. I'm gonna ephemerate. Maybe I hit the archeologist. That way, yeah, cause they can't dead that. Yeah, I'm gonna hit the archeologist. I already know one of the cards in their hand. Archaeologist triggers and hits a persist. I'll add persist to my hand. And it's a fury. Oh my god. Fury? They're gonna dead the grief, sure. How about Tefiri? What a timely boy. Alright, let's go up with the Tefiri and then let's just I don't know, persist this Archon. Oops, that's not right. 
I need you to be black. How's this? Is this cool? Trigger? Yay? Okay, good luck. Wow, how great was that ephemerate on the archaeologist? That was pretty sweet. All right, you can't cast footfalls because Teferi says you can't because you're not casting it as a sorcery, which is pretty cool. It's my Archon shirt. Pass to me. They are. Teferi can go, you know, I guess it's just going to go up again and then I can play Flooded Strand. I've already got Black Black. So let's, I guess, shock in Sacred Foundry and cast the troll. Here's a little four turn clock. Go. And they concede. Wow. Wow. Another two all. Man, that seems kind of nuts. What do you play? We played, we played Hammer Time into Rhinos. You'll love to see it. Well, we're going to get in right into a uh, little old round number three right about now. And we lost the die roll. Unfortunate. Um, we've got this hand's a little bit awkward. Savai Triome. So we can't land cycle our troll immediately. Two Archons. This hand's too clunky. We got to go to six. Hmm. Nope. Nothing sticking out to me as a game plan here. I'm looking at this persist sideways right now. But yeah, two rings. No, this is just a five, unfortunately. Their opponent keeps seven. That's unfortunate. Okay, we've got Archon, Grief, one land, two Archaeologists, Faithful Mending, Solitude. This is a weak five, but I think we kind of have to keep it. Shipping Archaeologist plus... The way we win is by getting Archon into the graveyard and getting it persist as fast as possible. Um, hmm. Maybe we need to pitch the Archaeologist since it does not help us find a land at all. So we'll try that. All right. Don't fall apart on me now, deck. Turn one Ragavan, is it finally time? Oh, it's just a DRC, that's fine. Oh, and a Bobble, that's whack. Don't love to see that. Land? Okay, we drew a land, that's pretty good. Pluto Delta and just pass. This is Murktide, I imagine this is gonna be a rougher matchup, um, but our plan is definitely to like, ignore the fact that they could potentially have counter magic and try to get this Archon into play as fast as possible. Land cycle, Lorien revealed, or are we considering? Thought Scour, okay. Consider goes to the bin, Thought Scour bin, Spell Pierce land. They play Ottawara and what? Consider, okay, big DRC. They kept whatever that card was, but they did not become delirious. They still only have instant and land, which is like kind of great for us. Um, they're not insulated against Blood Moon, so we're just gonna like get the best mana we can possibly get. And I think that begins with, hmm, we could grab Sparas and Watery Grave, or we could do like Savai. That'll give us the white and black and it'll give us red in case we top deck Fable. And then next to the Savai, we can get Hollowed Fountain and just ignore green for now. I think that's what we do. All right, there's the Savai Triome. This is where they're gonna pop their bobble to find out what the hell's going on. They're a little bit closer to Delirium now. They probably would have popped that earlier if it would have given them Delirium, but it wouldn't have, so. They draw a card. We get the Archaeologist. Hmm, let's see what we can do here. We'll play Marsh Flats. We're gonna fetch. We're gonna shock in a Hollowed Fountain. And we are just going to cast, I think, the Archaeologist. Could be Faithful Mending. We kind of want to get this Archon into the bin, actually. We're just gonna cast the Faithful Mending. White and blue. Okay, we find a Persist. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bin both. No, we're gonna bin Archon plus Archaeologist. What that's gonna let us do is grief our opponent before we go for the Persist, which is, I think, big game. So we'll just pass the turn. Two for an Expressive, so they're tapping out. Maybe they're hoping, now if they have like Force of Negation plus Spell Pierce, it's kind of tough for us. But what can you do? Would be wild is if they miss land here. That would be great. They got a Spire Bluff. All right, F6, deal three to me. All right, draw, troll. So what we'll do here is we will pitch the Archon, cast grief. We're gonna go cast by exiling, pitch Archon. This is a grief. It'd be really cool if you only had one way to do it. Wait, cancel. All right, grief trigger, show me your hand. Force of negation and counter spell. They're gonna be able to unholy heat or our Archon, but that's, we're signing up for that. So we're gonna go ahead and rip the force of negation out of their hand. Meaning that, and they didn't have a spell pierce. So, okay, this gives us our best chance. This persist is like, it's kind of awkward because we're definitely going to uh, lose our Archon to an unholy heat but that, that's just the way that it is. So we're going to tap for blue here, I think, and we will swamp cycle this first. And we'll grab, we've got white, white, kinda want black, black. I think we can just get swamp here though. We're just gonna grab swamp. We'll play swamp and now I'm going to persist and archon. We'll probably see them pitch either island or lightning bolt and then unholy heat the archon is what I would imagine happens here. They lose Darcy, cool, cool, cool. They're gonna drop to 14. We're gonna go up to 17, swap life totals, neat. We get an Archaeologist, not the best. And what did they pitch here? They pitched Island, so they don't have a land drop. Their hand is Counterspell on Holy Heat, Lightning Bolt, and Thought Scour, soon to be Thought Scour, Counterspell, and Lightning Bolt. Because they've got to heat this thing now. And now we're just looking for like another copy of Persist or something. There goes the Arkan. And it's your turn. Red, blue. Did they just top deck Expressive Iteration? Oh, they're going to dash Rags. Sure. That's fine. All right, you got it. I take two. What do we reveal? No Persist. The One Ring. Whew. Glad they can't cast that. That would have been sad. So their hand now is Thought Scour, Lightning Bolt, Ragavan, Counterspell. All right, let's make them use stuff. Blue this, Archaeologist. 
All right, it's cool. I guess I'll take an Ephemerate. Fable, sure, I'll take Fable. I could just not take Fable and make it so they can't bolt my Archaeologist though. That actually seemed interesting. This is wild and stupid, but I'm gonna choose not to take anything and have a 1-4, because I know their hand, and that blinks their Ragavan, so they probably need a Thought Scour now. There's the Scour, they lose a Bauble and a Tarn. Another hand is Ragavan, Counterspell, Lightning Bolt, Mystery Card, and Mystery Card. All right, it's back down to one Mystery Card. They're gonna hard cast Ragavan, which makes perfect sense. They're just gonna pass to me, great, great, great. All right, now I'm gonna jam another Archaeologist. This one also resolves. Cool. What are we flipping? Leyline Binding? Great, I'll take that one. And then I'll play Flooded Strand, and I will just pass the turn. This will allow me to fetch for Sparrow's Headquarters and have Binding on one, which is big, big game. And let's not forget there's a Faithful Mending in the bin as well. All right, so Counterspell, Bolt, question mark. Can't really do anything, so I can just fetch for my Triome. Sparrow's Headquarters, that gives us Mardu plus Green and Blue. Yep, we're good there. My turn. There's no such thing as a dead draw except for like Archons at this point. Ephemerate's not bad. Um, so here, we're just, we're big chilling. We're just gonna pass. We've got this Ephemerate. We'll probably like use it at the end of their turn. Just target my Archaeologist that's a 1-4 so they can't bolt it in response. They're gonna heat it. So now, I guess I'll do it now. Go White, Ephemerate, Archaeologist. Because their hand right now is Counterspell plus Bolt. So they'll need to Counterspell this if they want to, uh, they want the conversion. And they don't. So I just get another trigger and I get a 1-4. Would it be Flip? Plains, Marsh Flats, Archon. Great. That's fine. All right, so their hand is Counterspell and Lightning Bolt. We super don't care about that right now. We're grinding. We're in we're in Grind City. Bobble, no. Bobble me. Bobble you. Get that fetch land action. Uh-oh, they're not fetching, which means that they like the land. Or they like the card on top of their deck. So now we know it's Counterspell, Bolt, and card they want. Um, so I get to cast this Ephemerate, which is really neat. Ephemerate. My 1-4, so you can't bolt it. Uh, ephemerate and Binding. Like ephemerate. And another Archaeologist. Okay. <laughs> We've got a plan, kind of. Uh, let's play the Archaeologist and trigger the Archaeologist. And we get a Persist. Great. All right. So now we just pass. We're not going to jam this Persist directly into a Counterspell. Your go. They fetch to 13. Cool, cool, cool. Get a little Steam Vents. Whatever. Expressive. Gross and unfortunate. Um, let's let it be, I guess. Consider Entered the Exile Zone. They'll cast Consider, sure. They left the card on top, so they like a lot of their hand right now. I'd like another Grief, please. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and, do I Ephemerate here? Hmm, no, I don't think I do. I'll just take a draw step. Troll, not bad. Let's go ahead and Swamp Cycle this. We'll grab a Godless Shrine. Oh, there's two of those. That's really good to know. And then we can put the Godless Shrine into play tapped. No reason to shock it in or anything. And we can just pass the turn. And if they continue to just kind of like horde cards, we can start using the uh, Faithful Mending in our graveyard. As a matter of fact, I think we wait a little bit to do that. This game's not going anywhere in a hurry at the moment. The big nightmare is when they resolve a Murktide and counterspell my Leyline Binding. Then we need Solitude to do all of the work for us. All right, there's a Murktide. Probably just past the turn. Here, I am just going to Binding on their end step and force them to tap some mana. Binding. Counterspell my Binding. Sad, but yes. All right, my turn. Another Binding. Wow. Let's just cast it now. I don't want to get in any trouble by doing this when they have, like, way more mana up. Okay, do you have Pitch Cast Force of Negation? What's going on here? They could have it. Hmm. Let's go for it. I think we just have to go for it here. Um, leave the Triumphs up. We're going to Persist, and we're going to hit our Archon of Cruelty. Okay, they don't have it. That's great. Discard a card. A and both of my Triomes are white, so Ephemerate Archon. Ooh, I think they kind of can't win now. Draw a land? Wow. All right, go, opponent. So far, this deck has been very impressive to me. I kind of I like it a lot. Are you going to Unholy Heat my Archon? Well, check it out. Better have a Counterspell. Oopsie. They died. Okay, wow. So we got there off the back of the Persist. They counterspelled the, uh, whatchamacallit, the Leyline Binding. So I guess that was good for us. Okay, what's good against Murktide? Not EE, maybe Chalice. I don't think Spell Pierce is very good. The game's gonna go long. I think Verdict is a great role player. Tefiri is probably phenomenal. I don't know if Force is where we wanna be either. I could see Nihil, Nihil Spellbomb being quite good. I could see like these eight cards being good. The issue is this matchup is not as obvious what I wanna take out. I think this is a very poor matchup for the one ring. I think we just like don't want that card in her deck in this matchup. Could be that we wanna trim and ephemerate just cause of how it lines up against their removal. It turned out really well there um, when they tried to like kill our Archon and we had it. But I think that was more of a corner case than anything. I'm gonna trim one ephemerate. And then I think this matchup's gonna go for a while. I can probably afford to trim on some of my like big payoffs. So I'll cut an Archon. Um, I actually kind of like the Archaeologist in this matchup, to be honest. I could see Trimming and Persist just to get around their, uh, they're probably gonna bring in Hearse, which makes me wonder if I want, is like, maybe I don't, do I want Chalice in this matchup? I think I do. This isn't blue white control. Let's remove a Supreme Verdict. We'll sideboard in one. Cut some number of grief. Could just be that. And then like, do we want Spell Pierce? I think no. 
Force of Negation could be good, but I think I just want to try this for now. All right. And that was a mulligan to five. So that was, that was pretty good for a mulligan to five. Um, we've got Persist, Faithful Mending, Double Solitude, Troll. Feel obligated to keep this. Like, if nothing else, I can, I can just turn to troll them. We probably don't go for that unless they tap out and do something like hilarious, but... That's our line. They Ragavan us. I probably am just going to pitch cast Solitude under the Ragavan. Sure. We'll give it a draw step, obviously. See what we draw. Island. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Let's just pitch cast a Solitude now. Pitch cast. I don't say this. Who knows? All right. It resolves. So we're going to take out that Ragavan. Play like another threat. I can just persist the Solitude and play that game. Um, but we'll jam an Island. We're going to use the, uh, the troll to cycle for probably a basic swamp just to play around Blood Moon because we can. Flooded Train can get planes. We just have all of our colors. That's going to be pretty great. All right, they fetch. What are they going to do? Dash a Ragavan? No, they just consider. Okay. Season Pyromancer to the graveyard. Okay. Cycle this troll. Grab me a swamp. Ooh, grief is pretty neat. I'm not going to ever pitch persist to grief my opponent, but that's something I need to keep in mind. Um, I wonder if I'm just supposed to play Flooded Strand and plan to Faithful Mending. I think that's what I'm going to do. I think... Or do I just go for the persist here? No. No way, right? I'm just gonna pass. If there was an Archon in the bin, I'd 100% go for it, but I don't know if the troll pulls us far enough ahead. They Thought Scour, sure. Fire Bluff Canal, they're still at four cards in hand. I'm just gonna fetch for Planes and Faithful. No, no, well, I guess it's a Sacred Foundry, oops. A little misclick action. Ooh, we get a Teferi. Okay, we're probably gonna pitch Savai Triome plus, hard to say, um, mm, it's gotta be two lands, right? Yeah, Savai Triome plus Planes. Sad, but it's what we're doing. Turn. All right, we'll lead with a uh, Fake Out and play Teferi. Counterspell this, please. Nothing. I'm gonna take this up. If they have the Unholy Heat, so be it. Three for a Season Pyro, sure. Pitch an Island and a Blood Moon to draw two and make a 1-1, one, one. sure. Are you gonna shock that Steam Vent in? Nope, so no Heat. Let's see what we get. Another Tefiri. Great, not awful. Um, Let's go ahead and, hmm. Let's get an Elemental Token out of play. Godless Shrine, I could hard cast Grief. That seems like not nothing. Yeah, let's just hard cast this Grief. Boom. Grief, show me your secrets. Wow, their hand is gnarly. Um, Murktide, Murktide Subtlety? Hmm. I mean, I guess we just take subtlety, maybe. I'm just gonna take the subtlety. I don't even know what to take here. Let's pass. They're gonna go to combat. They're gonna offer the trade for grief. I'm gonna give it to them. Easy trade. Now what? Murktide into Murktide? No, they don't have enough graveyard for that, right? I'm kind of like white knuckling this persist because at this point in the game, I really want to try to get something more impactful than a troll in play. And I'm gonna hold it for as long, long as possible in case I need to persist my solitude. So that's fine. You have a 4-4. My turn. Faithful Mending, sure. Plus this Teferi. I can just Verdict, so I will. They're gonna go to combat. Probably attack my Teferi. I'm gonna show you the... Um, I will show you God. Go away. I would like to one for one the Murktide, please. All right, their hands... Oh, they're probably just gonna escape the... Uh, not escape, but use the Season Pyromancer's ability. Another Grief, sure. Probably just plus this Teferi. Pass. Planning to... Because they're gonna make two one ones. And then when they go to combat, I'll just make a troll with my persist, block one of the one ones. The Teferi will go to one or go to three. Sure, you got it, buddy. You know, I guess I can faithful mending first. I'm pretty sure we just do that, right? Like this? Faithful mending. Maybe I get an Archon. Not quite, but we'll pitch. I think we'll probably be hard casting this solitude. So maybe we just pitch like Teferi plus Grief. Yeah, Teferi plus Grief. I was hoping to hit an Archon there, but say levy. All right, here is my persist. I'm going to persist something cool. I wonder if we're just supposed to like persist Grief here and not block. What if we did that? Nah, I'm gonna put, oh, this is very hard. Because if I get Troll and I block, the Troll's gonna have a minus one, minus one counter. So it will have what? It's got stock five toughness, so it'll be a five, four. And then I block, so then Bolt can kill the troll. I think maybe I'm supposed to grief him. Yeah, let's persist the grief. Oh, wow, they just conceded to that? No kidding. Seems wrong. Well, I'm so 3 0 so far and completely undefeated. Uh, round four coming up. All right, we win the die roll. Honestly, I don't even. I, we can lose the next two and I'll be happy. Starting at 6 0 just seems unreasonably good. Okay. No persists in this hand, but we have Archaeologist plus Mending, and we can put a troll right into our graveyard. I think we're just going to keep this. This does seem fine. Our opponent takes a mulligan to six. You love to see it. You love to see it. Go to five, five, five. Oh, they stay on six. Okay. No reason to do anything crazy with our mana. We'll just put an island into play and pass the turn. Probably swamp cycle for like, eight. oh, it's Tron. Uh oh, we better get going quick. All right. We'll swamp cycle this for literally a, no, we don't need to worry about our mana. So we'll get watery grave just for, cause we can. All right. My turn. Put Watery Grave into play and play Archaeologist. Yeah, black, blue, Archaeologist. Ooh, we can take the one ring. I think we do. Grab this ring, pass. Ooh, so no natural Tron. They're gonna scrying, unfortunate, but they won't have Tron until turn four, which is pretty great. They're passing to us. Leyline Binding, not great, not awful. We'll shock in the Sacred Foundry. 
and we'll just make a fable happen. And then we will pass the turn. They're gonna Sylvan Scrying again. Okay, so they do have Tron. That's why they kept their seven. Slow Tron, but Tron nonetheless. All right, pass to us. Femorate, not great, not awful. Um, we're gonna use the ability. I think we'll pitch Godless Shrine plus Faithful Mending. Does that make sense? Do we need a land drop? Do we wanna play the ring? Becomes a question. Pitch Faithful Mending. Two Ephemerates, not, not great. Go to combat for two, make a little treasure. They drop to 18. Now we'll fetch. Probably grab a basic. Really no reason to get greedy with our mana. We'll just grab a basic planes and we will make a ring, I guess. All right. Get a burden counter. Not yet. We can wait. We can wait until their turn to do it. So we will. We probably lose this game. The one thing we're hoping for is that our opponent just like doesn't have gas and they've just made Tron. Um, that's kind of a tall order. I would I would be shocked if they didn't just put like Ugin or Karn into play and just kill us. Best case scenario, they put Worm Coil Engine into play. All right, there's a very ugly Tron. There's a Karn, so we're gonna go ahead and activate the ring now, and then we're going to sacrifice this for white and let that Karn resolve. They're gonna minus the Karn. I wonder what they get, maybe just ring. Stone Brain, sure. They're gonna pass to us. I guess we'll ephemerate our archeologist now. We'll grab, do we need another one ring? I guess we'll just take it and our turn. All right, the ephemerate's gonna happen again, so we'll let that happen. The ring will deal damage to us, boo. And then rebound ephemerate, target the archeologist. Um, trigger the archeologist, take faithful mending. Okay, and flip the fable. Okay, now we're here. Now what? Hmm. Play polluted delta. Let's do this, let's fetch. Go grab, we've got everything but green, right? We've got red, white, black, blue. So we'll get Spara's headquarters and then we'll just play leyline binding. The binding we will yoink Karn, meaning we can draw two with the one ring, okay? Now we can go to combat and attack for two. Cool. And then from here, I think we just pass and hope they just don't have like too much. I'm shocked they didn't sacrifice the stone brain. Now they're doing it. What are they going to hit? Persist? At this point, I've just got like the mana to cast my spells. They're naming Archon of Cruelty. Sure. All right. I get to draw because they took an Archon out of our hand and it is a fable. No O-Stone, please. Pretty pleased with sugar on top. O-Stone actually reasonably... No, it would be pretty bad. They get the Leyline Binding and their Karn would come back into play and that would be a little stinky. It's taking our opponent so long. Are they contempt... They probably just looked at the list we're playing and went, what the hell is going on in there? And to be honest, if I hadn't seen this and I stone brain this deck, I would be thinking the same thing so that's fair enough oh stone sylvan scrying sure Ooh, i guess they've got three from the tower so they could scrying for tower play tower play big card oh the one ring well that's stinky but it works they'll draw a card sure tower pass to us okay here's to hoping they just don't have very much going on play faithful mending um we will pitch i guess troll plus archaeologist that seems fair enough and then on tap our ring's gonna deal a bunch of damage to us we don't need to activate it yet i can't think of any reason to um do we have black black outside of treasures no i guess we can go like is there a swamp in our bin let's see here it doesn't look like there's a swamp in our bin so we should be able to fetch for basic swamp here yeah marsh flats fetch oh we can't grief them anyway though so we're not going to do that let's go to combat two just so we can get our treasure they're not going to take any damage obviously and then let's draw three cards. Cool. And then we can just play another ring. So we don't just die to the ring we have. And then no reason to do anything else. So we'll just pat. Wait, we can binding a ring. We probably should do that. So let's do that. Then we don't have to go to discard and that's cool. They O stone us. We can politely go to the next game. Oh, they're going to Ulamog us. Where's these triggers going? Binding plus uh, my reflections of Kiki Jiki. Let's start by drawing a card. Persist. Not the worst, not the best. Let's sacrifice this for white and a ephemerate the reflections and that will give us a goblin shaman and then ulamog is going to exile the binding so they have a karn back that's awful the way we deal with this ulamog is to solitude it which i don't want to do maybe we can get lucky and find another binding although we've already seen two so that seems like a tall order all right they plus their karn up don't know what that achieved another tower hate to see it oh stone no it's just a map okay crack the map i assume while you have the floating mana right, they're gonna pass to us we've got a line but like once we take it we have to hope our opponent never finds anything again so here goes nothing we'll on tap um ephemerate's gonna rebound so we'll take some damage to the one ring that's fine then if Ephemerate can hit the archaeologist. Give us another chance to hit Leyline Binding. And we do. And then we draw Grief. Okay. Um, now we get to use the Fables ability. Um, we will use it. We'll pitch, let's say, Godless Shrine plus maybe a Grief. Maybe it's just another Fable. Yeah, Godless Shrine plus Fable. All right. Now we Binding. And we're going to awkwardly hit their Ulamog. Don't love that. We need to try to clock our opponent. 
Um, okay, so we've done that. Now we can attack the Karn. Hmm, maybe we were supposed to... It's kind of hard. I wonder if we were just supposed to binding the Karn, but then we have to, like, solitude the Ulamog, and that sounds awful. So let's... Let's do this. Go to combat, attack the Karn, down to two. Hopefully there's no O-Stone in their sideboard. That'd be pretty lucky, huh? And then we need to... Let's persist, and we'll target grief. And then we will grief our opponent, and we will take their Karn. They have a besiege you, which is, like, really bad for us, because they can besiege you the binding. So, oof, that's pretty rough. And that means there's no reason to grief them again, because their hand is just lands. We'll play Hollowed Fountain. I suppose we can tap for black and white and we can persist and target our troll. And then that's all she wrote. We're gonna pass the turn. Probably besiege you the binding with the ring under it, to be honest, we'll see. If they make the mistake of besieging the leyline binding with the Ulamog under it, the Ulamog coming in, that trigger that exiles two things is a cash trigger. So then we will be able to solitude the Ulamog and take out the Karn. They're gonna go to 26 and we'll probably attack the Karn for straight lethal, bringing them down to like 19. But it does put them on like a two or three turn clock, but they're just playing the ring, which is like not great for us. I think once we go to sideboard, we're going to have to like, I don't know how much reconfiguring we can do with our deck, but we're going to need to be as aggressive as possible. Like we're going to ship anything that's not like grief scam and or persistent Archon on turn two. They got another Ulamog. I don't think they can cast it, but it doesn't matter because they have protection from everything. I guess I can take out the Karn. No, at this point, six... No, 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 no. There's, there's no out to this game. They're just going to juggle juggle those Ulamogs, and I will eventually die. I promise. Force of Negation seems quite good in this matchup. Um, Spell Pierce does not. Supreme Verdict does not. Tefiri does not. Uh, Chalice... If I have enough to cut, maybe Chalice is good on one. Engineer to Nihil. I think it's just the Force of Negations. What's not good? The One Ring's pretty bad. Is it just two One Rings, or is it like a One Ring plus, like, an... Fable? No, I think it's just like a couple of one rings. We need to be like very aggressive. We're just going to do this. Give that a shot. I think the, pi the the architect of this deck's plan for Tron was to reanimate on turn two and go as fast as possible, which is reasonable. But it means we have to get really lucky with our opener, which means we will be mulliganing aggressively. All right, game two. Show me a banger opener. Give me a turn two troll or something crazy. Let's see. We've got archaeologist mending ephemerate. Nope. This is not nearly aggressive enough to try that again. All right, we've got Archon, Archaeologist, Ephemerate. We can try. I think we'll keep this ship headquarters and plan for this Archaeologist to give us a persist. Although, that doesn't put an Archon in our graveyard. I just don't think we're going to five. This hand's playable. Mine in the map. Classic Tron. Grab, uh, probably Spara's headquarters. Sure, Spara's. My turn. Our Archaeologist, let's save this Flooded Strand and just jam an Archaeologist. All right, show me something good. Miss. Very cool. Pass. I guess next turn we can just ephemerate the archaeologist to try to find persist. That seems not that bad. There's a grief. All right, let's start by attacking with the archaeologist. And then let's... Hmm, let's flooded strand, fetch shock. Let's grab a watery grave. And then I think we'll start by playing another archaeologist. Wait, can't do that with those colors of mana, Adrian. There we go. Blue, white. Archaeologist. Trigger. Show me something good. Binding, not great. All right, well, here comes the grief scam, I guess. Um, cast by exiling Archon. Put the evoke trigger on the stack first, and then let's grief you. Let's try to take all of your action. Well, the worm coil engine actually kind of don't care. Um, I think I'd rather take the O stone first, and then white ephemerate the grief. Okay, and then we can just take out like a. Uh, a star or a sphere. We could also take out the worm coil engine, but I, I think I want to like, they've already got green. Do we just take the worm coil? I think I want to give them, I'm not worried about the worm coil itself and I'm kind of interested in giving them as few uh, opportunities to redraw as possible, but you're probably supposed to take worm coil here. Take worm coil and just hope they whiff a bunch. I think that's the play. All right, go pop map, go get power plant. All right, we need them to whiff just a whole bunch and maybe they will. Play star, sure, you got a star. Filter for green, redraw. Sure. Sphere. You got it. To for green redraw. All right. No ring, no Karn, please. Relic. Sure. Expedition map. Sure. All right. To recast the ephemerate, which I think we do. We're just going to... Do we grief them? I feel like we might need to grief them. Or do we just archaeologist? No, I think we grief. And we miss. Should have been archaeologist. Okay. We draw another archaeologist. Um, I guess we'll play it. Maybe find an other ephemerate. We found it. Combat. So to stop in their upkeep, because we've got plans. Uh, attack for one and go sure crack map get what power plant sure in your no wait not your upkeep I'll set a stop on your draw step. Is that where I do that? Yeah, all right, you got it. you've exiled all the graveyards 
and now upkeep and after you draw have you drawn how do i do this there should be a way to like cast the ephemerate after their draw stuff i don't know what it is so i'm just gonna hit okay okay they're in their main so that i didn't do it that was awful ugin Ugh. So had they already drawn? What happened there? I don't know. My plan was to let them draw a card, and then after their draw step, but before they go to their main phase, ephemerate my grief. That was the goal, anyway. Turn four. Plays Urza's Tower. Draws. Yeah, I guess I was just supposed to do it on their draw step. They must have already drawn. That was a big, big mistake. Oh, he's gonna hit my grief with the Ugin? Okay, I guess we'll ephemerate the, the grief. Take the one ring. That was weird. I just would have minus four that Ugin so fast okay well they we know they have nothing left so we're gonna rebound the ephemerate and hidden archaeologist do we hit anything leyline binding great play marsh flats we'll fetch two white sources the only thing we're missing is red so we'll grab survive trium then we'll tap white and we'll binding the ugin i guess and then we'll go to combat and we'll attack with everything take four i guess all right go i guess i can take that stop off your draw step huh they buy gigantha cool play gigantha now revealed cards is there a besiege you there was Maybe there's just not. Okay, I guess I'm gonna binding this Gigantha and try really hard to clock them. Good chance I could have waited on that, but I'm not sure if I can just like wait around for tr just let Tron draw a bunch of cards. Begin combat, attack, here comes the things with power, I guess. Four, 10, okay, here comes a red mana, this and this. Fable, make a dude, two turn clock, miss twice, I don't know. I get the feeling they didn't miss. Oh, it's just a relic, okay. It's not a hit, but it can lead to a hit. Crack relic, please don't find anything. Just a Tron land would be good for me. Thanks three karn liberated okay what do you do exile leyline binding and wipe my board yeah okay we finally took a loss to tron um that didn't develop the way we needed it to i think the way their hand developed if we just like got a turn to persist on a troll they would have died but it didn't happen so let's go ahead and get to game five we win the die rule again this game is very easy show me a cracked hand please troll i can cycle um no persist or anything but I can go grab a Godless Shrine. Faithless Mending becomes live. I think I'll keep this. Wait, can I? I can't quite turn one Grief Scam though, unfortunately. But we can try to do it turn two, which isn't the worst. So let's play an island and pass. Thought sees me. Well, I guess I gotta get my swamp now, huh? Uh, let's do, yeah, we wanna do a Godless Shrine to get our colors as good as they can be. Eh, take Grief, that makes sense. Come on, persist. Not quite cool, good talk. Play God the Shrine. Let's just get this archaeologist into play. Trigger the archaeologist. Take a persist. Well, there you go. Go. Pitchcast Fury. Okay. Is this scam? Are they just Fury scamming me right now? That's fine. Sure. You got it. Another persist. Wow. All right. We'll go Flooded Strand. We're just going to hold that land up for as long as we can. And we're going to persist a grief. It could be a troll, but I think we'll just hit a grief for now. And we will take Fury. Yeah, I think we'll... No, we won't take Fury. They can't. They're not even close to casting it. If they want to pitch cast it, fine go for it we'll take lightning bolt bowmasters i think yeah yeah we'll take lightning bolt off the first one and then we'll just fetch now there's no reason not to we'll grab a hollow fountain shock it into play let's try nope we're just gonna let them attack because we can block with our grief and then ephemerate it this has been a very good gauntlet we had round one hammer time round two rhinos round three Merc Tide, round four Tron, round five Scam. Like that's that's about as close as you're gonna get to like playing against at least a reasonable representation of the metagame. All right, we go to blocks, we block, and then before damage, we ephemerate our grief. Show me. Undying Malice, Fury, so they can pitch cast Fury? Um, I don't think so. We'll get rid of your Fury, okay? They passed us, which means, now ephemerate is not as good as Undying Malice in some ways, but in the way where it works twice, it's very good because I just get to do it again. I value the thought seize way more than attacking for three. Um, Bowmasters, how about no? All right, um, let's go ahead and right now, I'm gonna take my chance at Faithful Mending, maybe? Wait, maybe we don't. Maybe we just like put this Fable into play. What if we just did that? No, we can wait, we can wait. We're gonna go ahead and cast Faithful Mending. There's some crazy stuff that could happen like this. We'll pitch our kind of cruelty <laughs> and um, I don't know. Fable, I guess. Archon Fable. Seems kind of weird. Polluted Delta. Fetch. I guess we'll grab a red source just in case it comes up. Oh, we can't with that land. So I guess we'll grab the only shock we don't have already. And then we'll persist our Archon. Wow. Wow. You don't say. Figure this out. Oh, we won. Okay, that was great. That went about as good as I could have hoped it to. Um, Nihil Spellbomb, probably not. Maybe. No, probably not. Engineered, no, I don't think so. Chalice, no. Supreme Verdict. My sideboard seems very medium against Scam. I could see Supreme Verdict being like okay-ish, but you know what? Nah, I'm just not gonna sideboard. What do we got here? A couple of persists, a solitude, pitch cast solitude, keep it. Whatever. This hand seems fine. Turmoran Ragavan, great. I know what my plan is. All right, we draw binding, so we'll play Marsh Flats. We will evoke cast this solitude. Beep, see you, Ragavan. 
Not today. Go. I don't think we can afford to play around Blood Moon the way our mana set up. Depending on what they do, we could very easily be persisting a solitude. Kind of depends. Thought sees, sure. Yeah, we don't really care about that very much. They take binding. Great. Swamp. Grief scam. Okay. Looks like our opponent's going all in, which means we're just going to like not fetch. We're going to wait to see if they're doing the blood moon thing. They've only got one left in hand, but I'm still going to, I don't have anything to do with my mana, so I'm going to play around it. Persist. Makes sense. My turn. Okay. I guess we'll just put this flooded strand into play and pass the turn. Thought sees my one ring. Okay, cool. They were on the shred my hand plan. Pretty effective. Attack for four, great, I will take it. Lands, they're out of cards, but they have power in play, so that means something. Um, go. Attack for four, we can take this, we can, this can happen four more times. We need to draw something, we need to draw some heat in the meantime. No fable, great, love to see it. Binding? For free? Um, I kind of don't want to get Blood Mooned. I'm going to pass to them and probably binding them on their turn. Um, there's a couple ways we can do it. One way is to just ignore Blood Moon and get both of my Triumphs, and then I'll have perfect mana. Another thing I could do is use Flooded Strand to get an island, use Marsh Flats to get a Plains, and then just tap out for Leyland Binding. This is also effective, however, it makes Fable an awful top deck. I could meet in the middle and grab one basic and one non-basic, which is what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to fetch here. I think my non-basic will be a red source, so I'll grab Savai Triome. Or no, maybe I need to grab Island with this one. Hmm. I think I need to grab Savai Triome, and then... No, maybe it has to be Sparas. I really want to play to the top deck of Fable of the Mirror Breaker, being just, like, very good. But also, I want to make sure I have double... You know what? Yeah, let's grab Savai Triome. That gives me Mardu. And then, yeah, I guess I just need to like mutilate my mana base here. I guess I can't play around Blood Moon as well as I thought if I want to play to the top deck of Fable. Um, so we will grab Hollowed Fountain. Could be pretty good. Could be that we were supposed to get Basic Island as our basic land, but I don't know how much I like that. Yeah, we'll grab Hollowed Fountain, shock it into play, and then cast this here Leyline Binding. Please don't Blood Moon me, bro. Fable, Rats, that's no good. Faithful Mending, okay. Okay, blue, white, faithful. Hmm. I guess we'll just plan to cast the archaeologist next turn. See if maybe we can go land drop into persist. It's looking pretty grim here. I think they went, they went, they went grief scam us plus thought seize, thought seize. So our hand was like very effectively disassembled. Come at me. Did they make no changes to their hand? Ugh, no wonder. Another fable. All right, there's the land. So let's play. This could be insane. We'll see what happens. This could just be absolutely nutty. We'll see what goes on. Let's go blue plus whatever, archaeologist. Please bin Archon and persist. No, no luck. I have a one four. I guess we'll just like keep playing magic. Go. Two fable triggers. They both happen. Terminate. Gross. So we are now on like top deck persist or bust, I think. And like the card we draw of Archon still has to be good. All right. That we're super dead. Going to game three. Okay. We had three two threes or three two O's. One O oh two. And right now we're one and one. So let's see if we can clinch this four one. Um, let me reassess my sideboard. I really don't think there's anything that I want. Spell Pierce seems a little bit better if they're gonna scam me, but outside of that, it seems so miserable. You know what? No, let's just let's just chill. I've got no cl this sideboard. This isn't the way I'd tune the sideboard if I wanted to play against scam. So I'm just gonna try not sideboarding again. Um, we have Cycle the Troll. Bindings are good. Mending. Yeah, we'll just keep this. And then I guess we can just play the Savai Triome to start. We don't need to cycle the troll right away. We hope they don't Ragavan us for what that's worth. Looks like it's going to be either Grief Scam or just Thought Seize. Straight up Thought Seize. Great. Probably not that bad to take troll here. I don't have uh, access to blue mana right now. It could also take Fable because that card's just like inherently a two for one always. Yeah, they took Fable. Archon. Okay. Play Swamp and we will pass. We'll use this troll to get Watery Grave, I guess is what we need to do. Dothy. Well, we'll cycle the troll first, please. Watery Grave. All right, you have a Dothy. Turn. Marsh Flats. I think I can let this Dothy be for a moment, so I'll just play this Marsh Flats. If I need to, I will fetch for basic planes. The reason I'm not just going to like snap, play Watery Grave, shock it into play, and then grab the Dothy is that if I do get Blood Moon here, it gets really dark. Whereas if I leave the Marsh Flats in play, I can go get basic planes and everything's going to be more or less okay. Three, ouch. Play a Ragavan, sure. Okay, now I think I think I will play around Blood Moon at least a little bit. I'm going to grab my basic planes here. Planes, and that's going to let me binding. I think, unfortunately, the first thing I need to binding is actually Dolphy Voidwalker. I can always hit the Ragavan in post. That's no big deal. All right, we can just... <laughs> we can just cast Faithful Mending here and try to get absurdly lucky and hit a Persist. The downside is if that doesn't work, we only have, let's see here, if we cast Faithful Mending, we could do it by shocking and Watery Grave and tapping Watery Grave and Planes. That would still leave us with Binding up. 
give it a shot. Blue, white, and that leaves us white for the binding. Yeah, here we go. Faithful Mending. Bowmasters. Ugh. Okay, you got it. That's a Bowmaster. Do I need to binding this Bowmaster right now? No, I need to. I just need to do my thing. All right. Boop. We didn't hit it. Um, what do we want to discard here? I guess we need to pitch Archon. And I don't think we want to cast this mending anytime soon. So we'll pitch both of these. Bowmasters does its thing. I think I still need to hit the Ragavan. We're just hoping to draw persist here, I think. All right, opponent. You are up. Thought sees me. All right, I guess we'll cast a binding. Take the Ragavan out. I imagine they have to take Fable here. Maybe they don't because there's just a Bowmasters in play. And they can ride that for the rest of the game. Okay, they do take Fable. They dash Ragavan. Oh, fuck. That would be a reason to wait for the binding. Persist one time. Easy peasy. They exile Sparrow's headquarters, so that's not a persist. Okay, I guess we can do nothing. We do have two bindings now, so we can kind of just like relax for a second here. Dash Ragavan. I drew all four bindings. What does it mean? All right. These two. Binding. Rag. And then do we need to hit the Bowmaster as well? I think we do. Bowmaster. All right, dude, you got me in a three-ish turn clock. Persist off the top. Let's go. Found it. You only got two in hand. All right, come on. Archon. Yes. All right, don't kill this Archon. Just die. Dude, just die. Marsh Flats, go. Can't kill Archon. It's just, damn it, they can kill Archon. They've done it, the mad lads. All right, another persist off the top, please. So close. Um, we can Faithful Mending right now. I think we want to wait just to like play around the potential second Bowmaster, though. Like It's more likely that they have it now, but I don't want them to attack us. All right, just to land. They fetch. What, are they going to Blood Moon us? It's going to be kind of hard for us to fetch out from under it. We've already got our basic Swamp, though. Oh, they're going to Hardcast Fury. Sure. That's fine. You've got a fury. All right, Faithful Mending, do your thing. Be good. All right, nothing yet. I guess we'll keep Fable in our hand though. All right, my turn. Persist again. Oh, very close. Okay, we'll start with the Archaeologist. They'll give us a whole turn of blocking, which would be pretty good. And it could just find a Persist. Finds nothing. Okay, we'll fetch. Um, I guess we're taking some pain here. Um, Hollowed Fountain, play Fable. Red, whatever, whatever. Go. And there's another Faithful Mending in our bin. So we've got maybe a turn, two turns. Depends on what they draw. All right, we will block. Easy block. Dead Archaeologist. Takanuma. Okay, what do they want to get back? There's nothing in their bin currently. They can get a Grief or a Bowmasters. Ugh, the Bowmasters is pretty bad for us. Is that what they took? Yeah, the, it is what they took. Rats. Sure. You've killed the Goblin Shaman. I draw Faithful Mending. Ugh. Well, I'm not going to use his ability just yet. All right, now I can... Let me see. Six, seven, eight. Yeah, I just can't attack. We need to block with this Goblin Shaman. Oh, we were so close. All right, we're blocking Fury, I think. Wait, we can just block Orcish Bowmaster. If we block Orcish Bowmaster, we stand to take seven, but this Faithful Mending keeps us alive. I'm gonna block Orcish Bowmaster, dude. So we go to first strike damage first, right? And then, oh, right. Damn. Oh, this is awful. What was the best way to do this? Did I screw that up? Because we take first strike damage. Yeah, we just have to cast the Mending now to live. Ugh. And we don't want to cast the one out of our hand. We want to cast the one from our graveyard. So we'll go blue, white, black. Okay, neither of these are what we need. So I guess we have to pitch Ephemerate and Polluted Delta. And then the Bowmaster's probably going to kill the Goblin Shaman. So they don't lose the Bowmasters, I would imagine. Oh, they're going to hit me. Oh, right, because that's lethal again. And now I have to cast Faithful Mending again. Nope, I just lose. Okay, I think we screwed that up. There may have been a better way to do that. I have no clue. But our, oh man, that end game went so well for our opponent. Hey, we'll take a 3-2 with a random deck from a deck drop. That was pretty sweet. I'm probably going to play something like this again. I actually really liked the strategy with Troll in the deck. We didn't really get to do a whole lot of the uh, cycle persist the Troll right away, but I want to toy around with this deck. But that's all I got for you today. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I'll see you next time.